So hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Todd Gressley, the gallery director here at AO5 Gallery in Austin, Texas. And I'm joined by, oh my gosh, one of my all-time favorite human beings on the planet and artists. And I'll get into how I met her in a minute. But folks, from Leroy's Place, I've got Serene Bakia Galupi. And I said that right, Bakia Galupi? That's pretty good. <laughs> I mean, pretty good. Is it not good enough? It's a mouthful. <laughs> how, how do you say it? Bachi Galupi. Bachi, I thought it was gonna be two C's for Bachi Galupi. It's a America. weird. <laughs> America. America. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, hi Serene. I I love you. It's good to see you. It's so great to see you too. Thank you, Todd, for um having me on the on your show. <laughs> yeah, right on. Um, Todd talks has been a lot of fun to do. Um, so first of all, I'm gonna do a little background on you. I mean, just be how I found you. So I'm wandering New Orleans looking for new artists. Uh, gosh, two years ago. And I'm at the very end of sort of my threshold of where I look for artists. And I peek in this gallery with a really small entrance and I see these structures back in the gallery. It's a tiny gallery, but I see the structures and I walk in and there's a guy like wrapped in a fur coat. It was really cold. It was two years ago during the big freeze. And I walked in and he was like, hello. And I, I was mesmerized by these awesome paintings on vintage, <laughs> dumpy if you will you know goodwill art but the paintings were extraordinary and my neighbor growing up in indiana back in the 70s and 80s he had a big painting like a uh, a bob ross kind of thing that he was sick of so he painted a, a brontosaurus at the time when they thought those actually existed a brontosaurus coming out of the water and the wife was so mad she hung it in the garage so when us kids played in the garage we saw this dinosaur painted onto a painting so back to you i see your display this this pop-up amazing gallery and I fell in love with you and the guy was so kind to me he told me who you were where I could find you and that's how it all began and that's how I found Leroy's place I'm so excited <laughs> <laughs> so now you were New Orleans and now you're in New York so yeah let's yeah. talk about your transition from New Orleans to New York and being a mom sure yeah well um so Leroy's Place is, I, I, I'm the illustrator, but we're actually a small collaborative company of artists. So um, that New Orleans experience was our first show all together, which is so cool that you saw that incarnation of it. Um, and the concept was to take these sort of monsters in the paintings that you're kind of seeing behind us and bring them to life in 3D in these like giant sculptures and puppets. So um, that was the first show where I had worked with my collaborators who do the three-dimensional versions of all of this work. Um, so, and uh, this sort of more like interactive and installation element of the art, which was really exciting for me because I got to like, you know, walk around in the world that I've had kind of in my head. <laughs> um, so New Orleans was amazing for, you know, it's an incredible city full of artists. So I was so lucky to meet artists to, to work with there, but, um, you know, life is funny and New York is where my husband's family is from. And I had actually started my business, Leroy's Place in New York before I'd moved to New Orleans. And so fate kind of drew me back here and we opened a small gallery in Park Slope um, to sort of be the home for all of this crazy work. And yeah, somewhere along in there, I also fit in becoming a new mom. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. And I, I got to I got to meet him, and you named him. I named him Leroy after it. Leroy's place. <laughs> it's so great. A lot of people think that Leroy's place came from the baby, but the baby's name came from Leroy's place. It's the other way around. Yeah, it's so cool. I he really likes all the monsters so far. I was a little worried he would be like terrified of the monsters. Oh no! When when mom when mom creates, the kids love. You know. Um, I have collectors come in that have favorite monsters. I know one of your best sellers is the Ralphs or Ralph. Um, tell me about the first creatures you just came up with and why you found it to be successful. Yeah, so um, I think they, they sort of started as um, more animals. Um, and over time, you know, they exist really big in the painting. So they always felt monstrous, even if it was just like a big octopus or a big tiger. Um, and for me, the character design is the most exciting part of like my own creative process. So I really push myself to come up with new characters for a lot of the paintings, but uh, I do find myself 
with some favorites that repeat often and have evolved. <laughs> yeah, and that's so true. I mean, I think behind, yeah, behind me is collecting. I see these guys pop up a lot and they go to different parties and your paintings too. They do. Um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people don't realize that, that you actually take um, from Goodwill or the internet or whatever, an old beat up frame with an old offset print that was made, there were thousands of them made. There were simple household decorations that someone gave away and you give them new life with your, with your characters. Um, a lot of people don't realize that you do an original painting first and then you make limited editions, whether they be in vintage frames on board or on canvas, whatever you choose. And then you do limited editions or even editions on paper. There are basically three structures to what you do. So there's every price point as well. And that's what my collectors love, whether it's $5,000 or $50, there's, there's a Leroy's place to collect. Yeah, I mean, I think um, some of them are so narrative that they're really fun to have in a series. So I wanted it to be accessible for people to have more than one. Um, I, a lot of my uh, collectors have found that they love having a few of them on the wall for this sort of like weird kind of hotel -y, you know, with the mismatch frames and, and that look of it. And so I wanted people to be able to have that look, even if they if were uh, just buying the, the paper prints or the original. Right, right. And, uh, and like, just like behind you in the, in the, on the camera, you've got sort of a hodgepodge of what's there. And that's what I find that our clients do. They do a hodgepodge of your work, a salon style hanging of your work. And then some people just get a big giant one and they're, they're like, that's what I want above my couch. But what is, what is in, I'm going to get to the, because you're a trifecta. You're a, a two-dimensional artist. You're a multimedia artist. I'm talking um, movies and video. And you're three-dimensional artist with puppets and, and uh, uh, dolls or toys, whatever you want to call them. Um, but what is in your brain for a, let's say, a future character to come, like that you haven't done yet? Because you have your unicorns, blah, blah, blah. Is there something in your brain you're like, I haven't done this yet, but I'm going to? I have to say, you know, when you're working with monsters, I, the instinct is to always want to go bigger. <laughs> bigger. Um, so I, I've, I've recently been um, trying to, to think how we can accomplish that in, in, a, in a space. Um, so, so big is one thing. Um, I also don't have a lot of aquatic monsters so I've been working really hard on sea monsters those are always like harder for me I tend to lean towards fuzzy huggable guys um, so sea monsters is something that I've been challenging myself with um, but yeah and we I actually have some really good um, I've been working on some good like dragony guys lately more dragon big, yeah big big dragons and you big know your sharktopus sharktopus <laughs> is pretty big if you think about it right is it sharktopus wait a minute what yeah, there's a shark to push. Shark to push, yeah. Because the laser <laughs> penguin, shark to push. I mean, I, I, every time you send me new art and it's a, a critter or a scene I haven't seen before, I get really excited. It, it's easy for me to do with great artists, but I get real. I'm like, oh, I haven't seen this one yet. And it's hard for me to put it out for sale because I want to take it home. I want to adopt all your critters, you know? Oh, thank you. Well, you know, for me, I think like coming up with a really punny, uh, you know, making each painting have its own little narrative. Um, they're kind, I think of them kind of like as vignettes, almost like a comic strip or something where there's a little story just within that one um, painting. And, and honestly, that's the, the part of my work that I spend the most time on, believe it or not, is like the concept before the actual like drawings. And um, uh, one of the, like, I just made one, this is part of the new collection. This is a sneak peek um, and it's a bear -ito. Oh, I love you know, when you get burrito and it's got like a little bear. Ugh. I can't wait. <laughs> and what was it? Star the starburst fish? Starburst right? fish. I mean, come on. It's so great. So, um, okay. I want to talk about something I wasn't prepared for when Leroy's place, when your team came and set up the show here. I'm used to artists sending me artwork. And then my team goes to work and we set up a great show. You were basically like, look, we're coming from New York and we need three days to set up. <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is something that I'm really not used to. And we do a pretty impressive spread here at AO5. And a lot of work, when we do our big shows like Star Wars or Disney, it takes us, you know, months of preparation. But we can hang it in, in 24 hours and get it done. But let's talk about um, your, your collaborators with your, 
with your uh, dolls and puppets first, and then we're gonna go into your movies. Because I tell people to go on YouTube all the time, and they, they're like, these characters are in a movie? I'm like, yes, it's called You Can't Play With Us. But let's go into who, who do you work with with the critters to make them three-dimensional? And um, the, start there. Yeah, so um, I was incredibly lucky to meet um, Jacques Dufour. He is my um, puppet designer and sculptor, and he and I work really closely on a lot of the concepts. We brainstorm a lot together. He's an incredible creative mind. He um, built and designed a huge production of Fantastic Mr. Fox in New Orleans that ran at the Children's Art Museum for two years, and it was in a 20,000 square foot warehouse. Wow. And the whole thing was immersive and interactive. So you had to climb through it to get to different scenes. And, um, you know, they had little headlamps. And it was just an incredible production. Um, anyway, Jacques met me. And I had tried to make puppets myself of my work. And it's a really hard leap from the two-dimensional to the three-dimensional and preserving the same integrity of the characters and the feel of them. I just they didn't look the same when I built them and it was very frustrating. Um, so I met Jacques and he was looking through my paintings at a um, art market, actually an outdoor art market. And he said, have you ever thought of doing these as puppets? And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> I have like, so been trying so hard. Um, anyway, he made them and obviously they just have the same soul somehow. Um, so we were very lucky to meet each other and then um, our other collaborator, Whitney Rayner, she's our fabric artist, and she actually hand dyes all of the fabric to um, cover the monsters so they match the coloring and the paintings. And when we do installations, she'll actually um, dye the fabric to have the same sort of like tones as whatever painting that we're working on or trying to bring to life. Um, she um, also does all our costumes and, and things for the puppet. So, uh, we're, we're really, each one of us really has our own talent. I don't think we could fill each other's shoes. Um, so we're, we're really lucky to have such a great team. Well, I'll tell you, when you came to Texas and you brought the sock collector, the Ralph with all the socks in the box, you had to, we said on the, on the tag for the price, we always are very transparent of how things are made. And we had to put on the tag that every sock was handmade. These weren't socks you purchased in a store. <laughs> y'all y'all actually handmade each sock in this box of socks that were flowing out and he's all socked out. I hope you have a picture of it. You made every sock by hand. Like everyone was done. It wasn't purchased and thrown in a box. It's so special what you do. Yeah, well, we we definitely, you know, there's there's something you can tell when you look at an object and the whole thing is handmade. You know, even if you don't know the amount of time that went into it, you can, it has a different, feel and a different look. Um, same reason we hand dye the fabric instead of just like buying um, fabric to cover them. It just has a softer look. There's a variation in the texture and the color. Um, yeah, and I, I also, you know, it's really important to us, like there's a theme of these like using recycled materials and giving materials new life. So all of our, um, you know, my paintings are, are done on vintage paintings that have been discarded or, or refound and um, Jacques works, he sculpts entirely in cardboard and all recycled cardboard. Um, and then all of our fabric we get from thrift stores and then repurpose and re-dye. So, you know, a, a big part of our world is to, you know, sort of work from trash <laughs> and turn it into yeah. here. Yeah, you know, I have a lot of artists that work that way. Brandon Hancock, John Morse, you know, they take uh, things that have been discarded or would be discarded and, and repurpose it. We're really big on that, especially here in Austin. I mean, Austin's kind of a hippie town, a very cosmopolitan hippie town, as you noticed when you were here, of course. And uh, I think that's why people have really um, uh, been magnetized towards what you do. Even if I have one wall of you versus three walls, depending on how much work I have left in the gallery, um, people are gra they gravitate right towards your section. There's something very... Um, um, I, don't, I don't know what the word is. There's got to be a word in the English language about something that's in our brain with our memory from childhood that we continue with adulthood that there's a, there's a spark in what you do that really brings that, that joy out, you know, because when you're a kid, everything's blah, 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 and that's how you kind of feel with your work, which takes me to the question of the movies. 
So my first experience of one of your movies was You Can't Play With Us. That's the title, right? I want to get that wrong. Okay. Because <laughs> I love, and there is drama in the movies. I mean, it's not just all happy, go lucky, fun stuff. There's actually some real human elements to these critters kind of, you know, portraying how we are as people in your, in your characters. So let's talk about who you work with with your movies because it's puppets and it's uh, animation and, and talk about your movies and the names of them and where people can see them because I really want them to watch them and we can put up a link to sure. show people. But let's talk about them. Yeah, so the film was, um, th this was all again, trying to take the world of the paintings and bring it to life. So in the same way, somebody can walk into one of our installations and feel like they're inside the painting. You know, we wanted to explore that in film and see what a narrative was like and sort of what are these characters doing? How are they interacting? Um, and uh, we actually have uh, a few different, we have some animations that we've done, some short GIFs. Uh, we just recently did our first stop animation short, which was um, yet another kind of like um, medium to, to see these characters come to life in and clay. Um, so You Can't Play With Us was our longest. Um, it was, it's 15 minutes long. It was filmed with, um, in collaboration with Elephant Quilt Productions and Fish Pot Studios in New Orleans, which are both amazing, um, creative, wonderful people. Uh, we also work with the Ikaya Youth Project, which is a youth organization in inner city New Orleans. So we were really trying to, um, it was more geared towards kids, which are a lot of our work isn't necessarily specifically for kids. And this one was with kids in mind um, and giving a cool message, but also making a cool piece of art. I think um, people sort of underestimate kids and they can sniff out when things are lame. <laughs> so yes, they can. We I'm were trying really too. hard to make something not lame. <laughs> right, it wasn't um, lame. Um, so the films, uh, you can't play with us is one of them. They're all on our YouTube channel. It's Leroy's Palace. In a cave in a mountain, top with marshmallow snow, lives a curious creature, Felix the Dino. He lives in a world where dinosaurs feast on unicorn meat. <gasps> But Deluxe thinks they're just too magical to eat. Deluxe is on a journey to make new friends. What is up with this guy? But finds out fear can be hard to transcend. From the imaginative world of Leroy's place comes a new kind of fairy tale with sets and puppets made entirely from recycled material, like all dirty stuff. This wacky. Oh no, he didn't. Hip hop infused adventure. All right, unicorns, let's slay. Gives new meaning to turning trash into treasure. In our, uh, we had a warehouse in New Orleans for two and a half years where we did a lot of this film work and we're still actually editing and, and releasing some of the work from that time. So um, in addition to making new work, we've done some monster story times that, um, here in New York that we're currently editing. So that this film work is ongoing. Awesome. Well, that's something I look forward to. I, I remember the first time seeing, you know, with The Last Dinosaur you know, and he sees the unicorns and he just wants to be a part of that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so sad. It's so great. It's so great. And I, I mean, I'm, I'm encouraging all, all people watching Todd Talks today, you must, must, must go see the, the, the movies, especially um, You Can't Play With Us. I mean, again, it's the longest one at 15 minutes and it's not long enough, if you ask me. It's just, but I know how long it takes to do those. I mean, it's literally like the waterfall. You can just see the work going into this waterfall that's moving. It's, it's an extraordinary piece of art. And we had it on uh, during your show and even after your show was over, we just basically left everything up because it was so popular. <laughs> we left the, the movies playing and kids would come in and adults would come in and sit down on the floor of the gallery and just watch the loop of the films. And awesome. I just think, yeah, I just think it's extraordinary. It's, it's hard to find an artist that really hits this, this many 
genres that's not having it done by other people for them when they're 65. I mean, you're a young gal. So, I mean, this is really great. Well, it's a lot, but I do have a, um, you know, incredible team. It really is uh, the, the core of us is for artists and they've been so generous to work kind of within this like umbrella of this weird monster world that um, came out of my mind and they've just contributed so much with their incredible talents and um, yeah. Well, we're they're, they're great people. I mean, when they were here, like we had so much fun. It was just, I mean, it was so much work, but everybody just, it was, it was, it was so the force was so great with all of us. We loved you, y'all. I hope y'all loved us. Oh, <laughs> we it was so fun. fun. Well, yeah, you know, it's it exciting great. for us to be in a gallery that's open to kind of exploring these new way. It's more playful than a lot of art is. You know, it has a little more humor, which sometimes people don't take as seriously. Um, but, you know, I, I just really appreciate how open-minded I mean you have such a broad collection of work and artists in that space and to you know have our work hang alongside you know some of my artists that have been huge inspirations to me like um, you know Dr. Seuss and Miro, Disney, all these incredible artists you know it, it just felt like a really really special place to be able to discover new emerging artists work and then also find like established artists work in a many price points which you know, I, I don't think I've seen that in another gallery. So we're, we're really, really grateful to be a part of AO5. Well, it's an honor for us because, I mean, when I, when I, I, first of all, I look for artists everywhere I go in the world. I'm always looking for new artists. And if I go into a gallery, I see an artist I really want, usually you can get a name, but when it just said Leroy's place, it was like, how am I going to find this artist? The gentleman <laughs> at the front was so, he loved you so much. He was like, I will give you all of her information. Like you must talk to this girl, she's amazing. Of course, I didn't know Leroy's place at the time as a collaboration, I just knew about you. And anyway, um, you were supposed to do a really fantastic opening here at the gallery, I think June, the end of June or sometime. I know, well, the world, the world, the zombie apocalypse happened um, and we're still gonna have you back. We're just gonna have to postpone it. And before we were recording, we talked about you sending new stuff. So um, we'll announce when that happens, you're gonna send us new art, some new originals because I'm sold out of originals and new limited editions, et cetera. So we'll have those in here and then we'll pick a new date for your show. With that being said, because it was June, so you probably had a lot of plans. What, what did you, can you give us a, drop us a hint of what you had planned for the show? Look. I will. Um, so we had um, one, one of the ideas that, that we had, which I'm really excited to explore was, um, you know, what, one of the things that I've been really interested in exploring in our own gallery in New York is augmented reality, where you, you know, look through a, an app with like a, an iPad at a, a flat painting, and then it would like animate in the app. Um, and so really love this idea of kind of like looking at a still image, and then there's sort of this magic window and it comes to life. And Jacques had this amazing idea to try to do that in an analog way. Um, so we have this giant painting of a ship, for example, and um, Jacques has like cut the ship out of the painting and put like a, a mechanism on the back so you can like move the ship within the painting. So now you have this flat painting and the ship actually rocks and moves and then, um, you know, the there will be like a sea monster, which I'm working on. Um, which will also be able to be kind of like puppeteered so it will move. So now you have this like big flat painting that also is sort of kinetic. Um, so that was the, this kind of exciting idea of like making the paintings move within the frames. Um, last time our, our show was about having the characters pop out of the frames. And um, when you see the photos, you'll see monsters literally you know, coming, escaping the picture and this time we're keeping them contained but moving them around. <laughs> I love it. No, I mean, that's so cool because I love innovation. Um, sometimes in the art world, innovation gets a little, goes a little too far and you do this innovative stuff that you can put in the home. That's what I love about your innovation. It's not an easy feat when you're doing something people haven't done before because, I mean, we've all gone to art installations which are stunning, but it's like, three million needles hanging from like uh, invisible <laughs> fish wire and it sparkles and, and but you wouldn't hang that at your home and you could yeah. if you were a eclectic you know uh, billionaire but 
most people that's not attainable to them, but it's great to see it in an exhibit. Whereas you're making things that are exciting and new and different that people can, you know, pick up and take home, whether it's three-dimensional, two-dimensional or innovative, you know, like, yeah, it's cool what you're doing. I can't wait to see it. Oh my gosh. Thank this you. Well, you this. know, I think people have been spending so much time in their houses. They're starting to rethink the art that they have on their walls and wanting well, to. I, that's the thing is, is people are doing that. I found myself, of course, I, I ended up moving from my place in the woods to the middle of the city in Austin. So I had to rethink all my art, but it was a new play. I mean, it's, it's been a weird metamorphosis. Um, did you find yourself being, you're probably busy, too busy creating for the show to like rearrange, but did you find yourself kind of doing the same thing? A little bit, you know, I, you know, I'm, I've, I've, I'm very lucky to have an art collection that I treasure. So I love, but to me, I think people, you know, our Leroy's Place work is like, has such a light heartedness that I think people, I have actually gotten a lot of reach outs from collectors because they're like, I need something that's lighthearted that makes me feel good and happy when I look at it. <laughs> it's true. Uh, it does, it, I think it does do that. There's something really lo like lovable about these characters that somehow, you know, is relatable. I mean, th if, you, if you go deep into Leroy's place, you go real deep into it, <laughs> um, you can find the here and now in your work. And that's what I love about it. No matter what's going on in the world, your art, you know, speaks volumes to the here and now. It's, it's timeless, but you're using, you know, old paintings, old cheap lithographs, warped, faded, putting your new vibrant life into them, you're, you're, and you're making them relevant to the here and now. It's an incredible thing what you're doing. Thank you so much, Todd. Yeah, babe. I love what you do, and our, our collectors love it. I mean, it's just so great. I, I will come back to whatever section you're hanging in the gallery to see people gathered around your area. It's just, it's, it's a delight to well, see. Well, I'm so. excited to send you some new stuff. I'm really, I think I've got some really great um, new work that you guys haven't seen, so. Awesome. Um, well, we'll post it on our Facebook and our Instagram when it comes in, and we'll put it at you in our newsletter for AO5 Gallery, and we'll let them know when the new stuff's in, and then we'll also release the show date. As soon as we know that we can have a gallery uh, full of people for an opening, we'll do it. If for some reason it's 2021 so we can have a full gallery, we'll still do a really great installation for you. because well, we'll it's more open. time to make really amazing work, and, right. um, you know, we're still... Uh, we're still planning on it and coming up with stuff and um, yeah, everybody's on board. So as soon as we can, we'll be there. We're excited. I'm excited too. I love you so much. Like you're, you're the coolest. And um, uh. <laughs> uh, really it's faith that I found you. I was literally like freezing everything off in New Orleans. <laughs> it was that awful freeze. It was, it was, it was 29 degrees. Uh, Which is like unheard of. <laughs> unheard of. I mean, everyone was just like, and it was, it was just the craziest thing, but I had to go do my job. I had to find a new artist and I found some cool people, but you were the last that I found. And the, I mean, just the greatest thing, a uh, tiny marriage made in heaven. And I'm so happy to have it. I love it. it. <laughs> All right, we'll say bye to everybody. Cause you have a lot of collectors gonna watch this. So say, say whatever you want to say to them and then we'll sign you off. Yeah, well, thank you so much. Um, and you know, if you're interested in learning more about like our process and going deep into the sort of world of the sculptures and the paintings and the installations, the films, all of it can be found on our website also, LeroysPlace.com. And, um, and, you know, we can always do custom orders and different sizes for work. So if you contact Todd, um, we can work with you to create the right piece for your space. So I love thank it. you so much. I love it. No, thank you. And if you have any questions for Serene or the gang, uh, the whole Leroy's Place collaboration, just email me at uh, inquiries at AO5gallery.com and I can send her the inquiries. I can answer them for you. So thanks so much for joining me today, really. Yeah, I mean, thank you guys, and we'll see you soon, Austin. Yeah, Austin, we'll see you soon. <laughs> Folks, I'm Todd here at AO5 Gallery. I'm the gallery director. This is the lovable and fantastic, and she looks a little bit like Natasha from Bat for Lashes, which I'm also a big fan of. So <laughs> I, it's almost, it's like I get the, I get the dual effect. I get, I get serene, and then I get to go listen to Bat for Lashes now when I sign up. We're going to play him in the gallery. So, oh, look, yeah, hey, hey, Ralph. <laughs> So great. Oh my gosh. He's the greatest. 
Uh, folks, thanks for tuning in. Um, we're, we'll uh, answer all your questions for Serene and enjoy the video and subscribe to us on YouTube. Check out her movies and all of Leroy's Places stuff and we'll see y'all real soon. Bye.